Hey everyone, it's Holly and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you my top tips for how to take notes in online lectures. So this is a mix of my tips for taking notes in regular lecture style university classes, as well as taking notes when it's more specifically online lectures. So I really hope that you guys enjoy this video and find it useful. Let's just get started with the tips. So first of all, I always type my lecture notes. At the beginning of last year, I started trying to write them by hand in some of my English literature and linguistics classes, but I just found that it was much more time consuming and it took me a lot more time to then transfer those notes onto an online note. So I find that it's more helpful to type your lecture notes and then afterwards to write a summary. And this summary can act as a type of studying you can do before you take an exam in that subject. So I use Google Drive to take my notes. I always type my notes in a document in Google Drive that I put in a folder that is titled for that class. And then I also create a folder within each class that is specifically for lecture notes. So that way all of your lecture notes are in one place and you can keep them very organized. Another thing I always do is I choose a color for each class. And then I always use that same color to create titles for all of my notes in that class. So for example, in my History of Religion class last year, I always Always use this turquoise color for creating the titles and this way I kind of kept this consistent theme that went through all of my notes. Another thing I like to do is always to number and date my notes. This way I know when the note was taken and what number in the series of lectures the note is because sometimes you can have 12 or even 24 lectures for a specific class. You can have tons of lectures that go for that subject and in that way you know which note comes in which order. So as I said before, always use the same color for the titles of your notes and try to keep a consistent font, a consistent font size, and a consistent use of subtitles and bullet points throughout all of your notes. I tend to do my first subtitles in a color and bolded, and then the subtitles that come after those subtitles, I just do them bolded but in black. I also like to bold or underline words that are very important, that way they stick out and I can easily see them when I go back to study in that class. You can also use the highlight feature in Google Docs that allows you to highlight a specific section of text that you find to be important. You can also highlight after the fact with an actual highlighter, but sometimes it can be nice to highlight it in a document and that way you know even when you're looking at your note through your screen that that section is particularly important. In terms of online lectures, what I try to do is to not pause the lecture while I'm listening to it. Unless I really, really need to, of course, I can still pause it to go use the washroom, or if I need to check something that I'm trying to understand, if I want to look up a word or an event, I could pause the lecture occasionally, but if I pause it too often, it takes forever. So what I try to do is I try to listen to the lecture all the way through with only a couple pauses in the middle, and that way it's as if I went to the lecture in person. It's as if I had to listen to it all in one go. And then afterwards I like to go back into my lecture and I find all those spots that I had marked for having a problem or something I wanted to look into further. So when I'm confused about something while I'm listening to the lecture, I create a comment in the document and then I write down the time in the recording when the person, the lecturer, was talking about that thing that I was confused about. That way, after the fact, I go back through the lecture and I go to all those spots that I had commented on and then I re-listen to just that specific part of the lecture. If you find that you don't have to pause very often, you can just go over it as you're listening to it the first time. But depending on the class for me, sometimes I have quite a few of those spots that I need to go back to. So I try to just do it as I would for a regular lecture and I mark all those spots where I was confused. So when I'm done listening to my lecture, I go through all of it and I adjust the formatting so that it's a little bit more consistent. I fix the bullet points, I fix a few sentences. Normally after a lecture that is in person, I would have to go through it and read through the entire document, make things into full sentences, look things up that I didn't fully understand. When you're using online lectures, I find that this is a little bit less. You don't have to go through to add full sentences because you might have paused it enough to give yourself time to write things out fully. However, if you like, you can also fix up the wording, fix up some sentences that don't really make sense, and that way you have a full comprehensive lecture note that you can go back to when you're studying for your exam. 
Something you really want to make sure you do is that you're saving your notes. So what I always do is after I have finished my note completely, I save it to my desktop and I put it into a folder labeled university where I have all of the names of my classes so I can just easily deposit it into the class where it belongs. So I have a similar categorization system on Google Drive as well as on my computer. That way if there was a problem with Google Drive, I would still have all of my documents saved onto my computer. You can also even put this onto a hard drive. I do this. I am really that type of person that likes to really back things up, so occasionally I will back up that folder from my computer onto my hard drive. I also like to print my notes, so you can leave this till the end when you're making summaries and you want to read over your notes. I personally like to read over my notes on paper. I know it's not the best for the environment, and if you don't have a printer, it's definitely not practical, but I like to print off my notes after I have finished them. That way, I can put them all into a binder and have this stack of paper notes that I have to go back to when it is time to start studying for exams. This last tip is something that I wish I had done last year and that I'm going to try to do this year. So if you can, and if you can stay on top of your lectures, do so. And then when you get to the middle of the semester and you have some time off, make summaries of your notes. So go back, read through all those notes, and summarize it into one page or two pages for each lecture note. That way, when you get to the end of the semester, if you're being tested on content, such as in history, if you really have to know all of the things that your lecturers were talking about, it's not just skill-based, like in literature it's a little bit more skill-based. In history, it's really based on knowing content. So I like to create summaries about one page for each lecture note, where then I can keep them all together for my final exam. Last year I left this to the end and then I had to go through like 24 or 40 lecture notes if you include my two different classes where I had to make these summaries and it was a lot to do at the very end of the year. So what I'm planning on doing this year is in the middle of the semester and at the end of the semester to make all of these summaries. That way I don't have to do them all at the end of the semester. One other tip for online classes is try to listen to the lecture when it's posted. So if you have a specific time that that class runs, such as from 2 till 3.30 p.m. on Wednesdays, try to listen to the recording at that time. And that way you won't have all of these things building up and overwhelming you as the semester progresses. It can be tempting when you have online classes to just leave them till later because you know that they're always gonna be there, they're online, and if they're not live, you can do them whenever you want. But if you can, try to create a schedule and stick to it. That way you won't have all of these things floating around in your to-do list that is growing bigger and bigger every day. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and got some tips for how to take notes in online lectures. I am going to try to implement all these tips this year for taking notes in online lectures. Some of them are very useful, such as making summaries as the semester progresses and such as doing the lecture when it's supposed to be scheduled. That way it doesn't build up. I did have some of those last year. Even when I had in-person lectures, it's really hard to keep up with taking your lecture notes and having organized notes all of the time, so I'm going to try to be a little bit more on top of that in the 2020-21 to 21 school year. Leave a comment below if you have any video requests for videos about university or about online school, and I will be sure to check those out. So I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!